بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن ذا شيء تسهلا قال المصنف الشيخ عبد الله سراجلين فعن الله به وبكم في كتابه سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الشيخ سراج عبد الله سراجلين says in his book سيدنا محمد رسول الله our master محمد the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us through him and through you. Adluhu, okay. uh, this is the chapter of his um, justice. Adluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'atala khalqi lahi ta'ala fi huquqi lahi ta'ala wa fi huquqi ibadzi lahi ta'ala qawwaman bil qisq fi mantasin in al-haqqi haythu kan haythu kan al-haqq. مع القوي والضعيف مع الغني والفقير مع الكبير والصغير أو مع الرجل والمرأة مع الحر والعبد روى شيخان ونفض للبخاري عن أروة أن امرأة سرقت في عهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في غزوة الفتح ففزع قومها إذا إلى أسامة بن زيد رضي الله عنهما يستشفعونه قالوا عروة فلما كلم أسامة في فيها تلون وجه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أي من شدة الغضب وقال لأسامة أتكلمني في حد من حدود الله تعالى فقال أسامة سغفر لي يا رسول الله فلما كان العشي قام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطيبا فأثنى على الله بما هو أهل ثم قال أما بعد فإنما هلك الناس وأي قبلكم في الأمم الماضية إن أنهم إذا سرقوا فيهم الشريف تركوه وإذا سرقوا فيهم الضعيف أقاموا عليه الحد والذي نفسي بيده لو أن فاطمة بنت محمد سرقت لقطعت يدها So this is on the chapter on his justice صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم was the most equitable of Allah's creatures with regards to the rights of Allah. Creatures as khalq is translated as creatures. It was the most equitable of Allah's uh, creation um, or creatures with uh, creation with regards to the rights of Allah and the rights of Allah's servants. He maintained justice and supported the truth wherever it lay, wherever it would be, whether with the weak or strong, the rich or poor, the old or young, the man or woman, the free man or slave. Bukhari Muslim narrated, and the wording here is Bukhari's on the authority of Urwa that a woman stole during the time of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the conquest of Mecca. So her family went to Usama bin Zayd to plead for his intercession. When Usama spoke to him about her, the face of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam colored, i.e. changed in color. And he said, do you speak to me concerning one of the hudud, one of the laws of Allah Almighty, the ordinances of Allah Almighty, Osama replied, he understood immediately he was angry at him. He said, Osama replied, seek forgiveness for me, O Messenger of Allah. That evening, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood and delivered a sermon. He praised Allah as he should be praised and then said, the people only came, i.e. the people before you only came to ruin because if a noble man from amongst them stole, they left him. But if a lowly person stole, they carried out his punishment. By he in whose hand is my soul. If Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, stole, I would I would amputate her hand. So then the ثم أمر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بتلك المرأة فقطع يدها فحسنت توبته بعد ذلك وتزوجت. قالت عائشة رضي الله عنها كانت تأتي بعد ذلك فرفع حدثها إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed that the woman's hand be amputated and she made good her repentance afterwards and went on to marry. Aisha radiallahu anha said, after that she used to come to me. Uh, after that she used to come to me and I would mention her needs to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here, um, this is actually part of this hadith. I, I uh, mention it in my... Um, Revival course, but one of the things that he, or the other the other narration of this hadith is, um, well, uh, in the beginning, they they were talking the 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 tribe of this woman were talking about. They said, "Who should we ask to uh, do intercede with us to the Messenger of Allah?" And he said, and then they said to them, "Who else?" But Hibbu Hibbihi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the beloved of his beloved, Usama bin Zayd. And this is not in the revival course, but it, it, this is, I mentioned it, I mentioned this in the talk of how the, uh, the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shattered racism because 
Umasama bin Zaid was uh, was black, and it was known to all of Medina. Like the person they chose to who is who's going to like basically kiss up to the Prophet Sallallahu who's going to get us in there, who's going to speak something, say something to the Prophet Sallallahu that he will listen to because he loves him so much. Who was it? It was from all of Medina they know, from his wife, et cetera, et cetera, everybody, they chose Usama bin Zaid, on who was a black man. And that way, how just how it was known throughout Medina, these people, the people he loved. Right. This is how this, I, I mentioned this in the talk. It's, it's actually it was a two hour long talk, but it was it could have been even hours long because of the material that we have. And the whole thing was just hadith, just hadith. And it was just material that they, that there is to talk about how his interaction is just it's amazing. Anyhow, the 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 part I, I mentioned here in the um the other this hadith subhan every single hadith that's why i call the revival course a course on hadith because we basically study different hadith but here this hadith i mention it because subhanallah here um what what so you know we 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 see this mention this hadith is mentioned about his adat about his justice but we see so many there's so many messages in this Right, of course, about Sayyidina Osama bin Zaid, about his own justice, that how he, his words, that if my daughter, and he, they knew his daughter was the Sayyidu Nisa in Adami, right? She was the the master of women, of, of the women of paradise. And he, how, how he spoke to her because out of his justice, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to, to let people know that don't you dare ever try this again you know and um and then after that she she her repented she she got her hand cut off she went into mary and she her to toba was good her repentance she made good repentance afterwards and how she integrated in society this woman who had committed a crime that caused her to have a hut punishment that not she only was she able to reintegrate into society she would come and visit the wives of the Prophet وسلم, the highest authority, and the Prophet وسلم, her, himself would seek to fulfill her needs. This is our Prophet وسلم, just so it's it's incredible. I mean, she wasn't an outcast. She wasn't, uh, you know, oh, she did a sin and she's forever outcast from the community, from society. She would come and visit his most beloved person, which was say the Aisha, she would come to the closest place. She would be welcomed into, <clears throat> I mean, what what can you say? Like from in today's society, it would be like the highest right into, you know, I don't want to compare right into the highest authority, right into the, you know, the um imams, not just he wasn't the imam, he was the imam of dunya, right? Say the Ani Sallallahu Alaihi in, into his house and to ask him about her needs, what she needed. And so say that Aisha would tell him, oh, she needs this. She needs this. Can you get her this? Whatever it is. You know, she needs money or she needs whatever it is, her needs. And she, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu would seek to fulfill her needs. So this was, this was Medinan society. And um, subhanAllah, that's what we... That's uh, going back to just the revival course is the name revival is to revive Medinan society. So these are things that, uh, you know, uh, can be pointed out. Going back to the text, Audun. Uh, <laughs> نعم دون دون هودة في ذلك فقد روى الإمام أحمد عن عبد الله عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثا أي يقول له ادفع له حقه قال وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
إذا قال ثلاثة منهم يراجع فخرج ابن أبي حضرد دين إلى السوق فنزع عمامته فاتزر بها ودفع عليه البرد الذي كان متزما به فباعه بأربعة دراهم فدفعها إليه أي إلى اليهودي فمرت عجوز فسألت سيدة ابن أبي حضرد عن حالي فأخبرها بحاجته فدفعت له بردا كان عليها وكان أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال كان لرجل على الحديث so here it says um, behold you of behold O you of sagacity so you the one who is aqid the one who has a, a mind a thinking mind a working mind look at his equity as his great equity and upright judgment more than this his equity even extended to en enemies to whom he would give their lawful rights without mitigation Imam Ahmed narrated that Abdullah ibn Abi Hadrat al-Asami owed four dirhams to a Jew who appealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to secure his repayment. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, pay him as due. Ibn Abi Hadrat replied, I don't have it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated three times, pay him as due. Pay him as due, pay, pay him as due. If the messenger, and if the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something three times, he would not change his mind. Um, Ibn, uh, I'll come back to this point here. Ibn Abi Hadrat went to the marketplace, removed his turban to use as a loincloth. So um, he he had apparently he just had like two pieces of clothing. Um, he had you know what would cover his bottom half and his turban. So he removed his turban and put it on as a loincloth as to cover his bottom half, and then he removed the cloak he was wearing. So he was wearing a cloak. And he sold it for four dirhams, and then he paid the back the Jew. An old woman passed by Ibn Abi Hadrat and asked after him. He told her about what had happened, so she gave him a cloak she had with her. So it was apparent it was he was he was poor because it, it, the cloth that one wears for a turban is not the same as one wears for you know covering themselves. So, um, uh, so this is in terms of uh, he. We why does he say he he would give the rights even the rights that were um, that were sought by his enemies, right? Because the Jews, if, when we read the Surah Asira, the Jews had great um, makid. They they had great great planning and you know conniving against the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The 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 his whole time when he was in Medina, uh, they had you know always plotting and always. You know, planning against it. You know, they were very uh, conniving people. But even with this, you know, a Jew comes and seeks um, re re repayment from who? From the Prophet sallam. He's seeking help from the Prophet sallam, and he knows. Of course, the Prophet sallam says something to the Sahaba. The khalas, they have to do it. But he, if he says it three times, what's what's uh, what's interesting here? What's important to note here is that. The Sahaba did, um, how can you say it, in the most respectful way, of course, but they did uh, They did uh, have discussion with the Prophet ﷺ, meaning that if the Prophet ﷺ said something, they could respond to him and say, well, what about this? You know, this is too hard for us, or can you make it easy for us? <clears throat> and you know, sometimes the ruling would change because of that discussion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them well because this was, um, this sometimes the rulings, as the Prophet sallallahu would say a ruling and they would say, well, this is too difficult. Then we won't be able to do this or we don't want to be able to do this. And they said, okay, then this. But if he said it three times, they would not be, you know, after that, خلاص, they would realize this is this is it. There's no more, um, you know, discussing with him. They can't change his mind anymore, right? <clears throat> but it is important to know because you see how the Prophet he's the musharriya. He is the one who gives the hukam, and he gives the hukam from Allah subhanahu wa taala. But because of, um, and that's why he disliked so much if they asked something that made it harder for people because if um, and he said it, some of the people who are, have the most difficult adab, most difficult torture on the day of judgment is someone who asked something and it became um, 
uh, obligatory when it, it wasn't. Uh, and this happened, you know, when he was talking about Hajj uh, and Umrah and somebody said, is it if in every year we have to do this? And he was silent and he said, is every year? He kept on asking. And the Prophet Wasallam said, you know, don't ask. He said, if I were to say yes, it would have been obligatory. Means what? There's a lot you can take for this. Of course, this is another discussion of, in terms of he was mushari'. He was he gave the hukum and it was everything was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But um, out of his mercy, he wouldn't like, he hated that people would ask things that would make it more difficult. Whereas the Sahaba would ask things to make more easy and he would accept that. Um, are we doing? روى شيخان واللفظ للبخاري عن عروة أن مرأة تركت سرقت في عهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال كان لرجل على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سن أي دابة ذات سن من الإبل فجاءه يتقاضاه أي يقول قضاء حقي وإنه أغلى له في القول حتى هم به بعض القوم أي هم بعض الصحابة بالضرب لما أغلظه في القول على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان عربيا كما في رواية ابن ماجة فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم دعوه وتركوه في النبي صاحب بالحق ما قال ثم قال ثم قال أعطوه فطربوا سنه فلم يجدوا إلا سنا حقا وإحسانا فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أعطوه فقال الرجل وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن خيركم أحسنكم قضاء أخرجوا الخمسة إلى أبا داود وما في في جامع العسود <coughs> So he says uh, Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه reported that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم owed a camel to a man who came to him to ask him to settle the debt he spoke to him harshly so this man is uh, saying you know just being rude and uh, to the Prophet وسلم, until some of those Sahaba pr present were on the brink of of hitting him. Here it says challenging him. It, it, it means uh, it really means hitting him. Like they wanted to beat him up. <clears throat> the Prophet وسلم, said, "Leave him for the one who is owed has a right to speak." How forbearing he was, وسلم, <clears throat> meaning what the one who is owed has a right to speak. The sahib al haqi maqala. It's a very uh, it's a very it's a very important concept. The person who has a right has a right to speak. The person who has a right, i.e., and has been oppressed and has been prevented that right. He, the one who has a right and has been prevented that right and has been oppressed from it, has a right to speak. What does that mean? And practically, it means so many things. If you've if you've uh, if you've uh, wronged someone, and that person is like just fed up with you and comes cursing at you, don't remind them. Oh, this is not from the Sunnah. This is not. I mean, give them their right. The first thing, give them their right. Don't talk about. Oh, this is not from the. Look how you're talking. You're rude. And uh, what's it? The Prophet said, "What did he say? Say to him, oh, how rude! Ask in a better way. This is not the way to ask." He said, he taught the Sahaba, he said, the Sahaba, think about it, the empathy, the empathy, the recognition, the subhanAllah is, is just, uh, and it's not about you and I having empathy. It's about the, it's, this is, you know, the Sayyidu Walid, the Adam, he was the master of the children of Adam. He's, you know, I mean, can you imagine how, uh, you know, how's royalty, how did royalty expect to be treated? He's more than royalty. And this is what he's teaching the Sahaba. Somebody's being rude to him. And he just, he doesn't say, oh, you know, you can ask in a better way. Don't talk to me like that. He does. He has every right to, right to, because not just that he's he's the leader. He's the messenger of Allah. It was forbidden. It's haram for someone to speak to him rudely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the harshest thing about someone who wrote, wrote, uh, raised his voice in front of the Messenger of Allah. They said, uh, that you, um, do they not fear that their, their, all their deeds will be be not, be, be decimated? You know, if they raise their voices, not yelling at him, just raising their voices. But here he says, this is very important. When, when a person who has 
Um, and this is, this is unfortunate. These are things that we need to bring out to the people. This is the thing that we need to bring out to the people are people like, you know, somebody who has been oppressed. They have a right to uh, demand reparations. They have a re right to demand uh, that um, justice. They have a right to go out and scream and, you know, protest and, you know, demand that their rights be given back. They have a right. They're, they don't, they don't, you don't need to be, you know, your rights are being taken. Oh, you need to be, oh, be polite and be, you know, what is this? Be polite at the protests. Sometimes I'm like, it's, it makes me really, uh, it puzzles me. You, you know, as Muslims, we want to be so polite. Oh, be, remember to go to the protests and be really, really polite. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What kind of, uh, you, what, who are we need? We need to follow their, their um, measurement of what's right and wrong. You know, the poet's a lot. He said, this is somebody who doesn't have his rights have been taken. He has, he has a right to say things. He has a right to speak. The, the way that I feel like the, the Muslim community is just so weak, so weak. We don't, we want to, even when we're going to the, you know, the, the oppressor, we, we have to speak so politely and kindly to them. So, um, he said, uh, then, then uh, I'll, I'll continue. And then he said, he said he spoke to him harshly until some of the Sahaba present were on the brink of uh, beating him. The Prophet said, "Leave him for the one who is who is owed has a right to speak, or the one who has a right, i.e., which is uh, which he has been prevented from, has a right to speak, or has a right to has maqala is not just right to speak. Maqala is like a speech, or like he." Uh, like whatever he says, almost like, you know, a maqal can be, you know, uh, it can be a speech, meaning it's not just he has a right to speak, but he has like, he can say things, basically. He can say things. Um, and then he says, then he said, give him his due. They called for a camel to be brought, but the only one they could find was of better condition than the one he owed. And remember, you know, the camels, they are different. And as they get older, um, they get more expensive. So here they they are better condition, maybe older than the one that he owed. So they're more it was more expensive. So the Prophet ﷺ said, "Give it to him." The man said, "You have reimbursed me in full. May Allah re, um, Almighty repay you in kind." The Prophet ﷺ replied, "The best of you is the one who repays in the best way." And um, again, here Subhanallah, we can see even um, by when the man was Allah Ta'ala, when you've paid me even uh when he um repaid him that the man was calmed down, right? He was um <clears throat> he was in it doesn't say that this man was uh, a Jew or you know, so he could have been he he was a Muslim. You know, but how the dealing of the Prophet is in him. It could either have led him to leave Islam, right? If he dealt with him a certain way, or, you know, the way that Prophet Sallallahu dealt with him, how would you feel? Like, okay, this person did a mistake. You know, he had, the Prophet Sallallahu owed him, whatever whatever issue he had, you know, he he was rude, but how did the Prophet Sallallahu his his dealing with him, he kept him a Muslim. He kept him a Muslim. If the Prophet ﷺ said, shut up, you idiot, or, you know, you, you don't know how to talk to me. Get out of my face. You don't know how to talk to me. I'm the messenger of Allah. Get out of here. He could have said that because that's that's the kind of respect he deserves. Is this guy, you know, he, he that's the kind of respect the Prophet ﷺ deserves. The highest way. It was a haram for the Sahaba to speak like that, right? But he didn't. He just, he calmed both sides. He calmed the Sahaba down and he gave them better. And, and I'm sure the even just the du'a that he made for the Prophet it's obvious that he was gr grateful. He was grateful, and he was he he saw the Prophet gave him more than he owed him, <clears throat> and you know he he was grateful, and jealous. that sparked the love and more increase in iman. You know he saved him from the fire. Right? It's just the amazing akhlaq. And then um, he says. Uh, uh, وَلَقَدْ كَانَ صلى الله عليه وسلم يتحرّ إليه قبل بعثته إليه لما عرفوه من عدله 
من عدلي وأمانتي يقال ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه كان يتحكم إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الجاهلية قبل الإسلام وروى ابن أبي شيبة عن أبي رافع عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال والله لا أمين لا أمين في السماء وأمين في الأرض والله إني لا أمين في السماء وأمين في الأرض صلى الله عليه وسلم so he says the Prophet وسلم, would be sought out to give judgment even before his mission because all recognize his equity and trustworthiness. Ibn Mas'ud Mas who said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be sought out to give judgment in the pre-Islamic times of his ignorance, i.e. before he uh, was sent as a messenger. Ibn Abi Shayba narrated on the authority of Abu Rafi that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, by Allah, I am reliable, I'm Amin, I'm an Amin. In, uh, a trustworthy one um, in the heavens and Amin on earth. I am um, a trustworthy one in the heavens and trustworthy ones in in a trustworthy one in earth. And Kaif, yeah, and how how not? How would it be otherwise that someone who is trustworthy in the heavens, someone who is known to be trustworthy in the heavens? and not trustworthy under earth. I um, don't know how long we've been going for. Let's see, this is a chapter on Rahmatu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam This is his, on his mercy to the world and inshallah, it's going to be a beautiful chapter but I'll set stop. I'll actually start a little bit because just because it's last Friday of Ramadan and I want to talk about his mercy. And we're so lucky to be talking about it. الرجال والنساء والصبيان ورحمة بالطير والحيوان فهو رحمة رحمة عامة لجميع خلق الله تعالى. So his mercy to the world, Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, and we have not sent you except as a mercy to the world. سبحانه وتعالى سبحان الله. Actually, just reading it this Ramadan, this ayah, I was reading it. Um, I realized. One of the things I realized about it, it was just the mercy that, just the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us, that he sent him as, he sent his last messenger, not not for anything, illa wa ma even this, we have not sent you except as mercy. It's um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only sent him as a mercy to the world. And how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved his creation to send his last and final and best messenger as nothing but a mercy. And uh, subhanAllah, I was just usually just thinking about the ayah. I think about the uh, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This time I I just realized the, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah for us. Uh, he is the messenger he وسلم, is the messenger of mercy whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us sent as a mercy to all created beings a mercy to the believers and mercy to the disbelievers and a mercy to the hypocrites and a mercy to all humanity men, women and children and a mercy to the birds and the animals he is an all embracing mercy to all of Allah's creation I love that I love how he tells it. He's an all-embracing create mercy. Because uh, um, subhanAllah, there's um, uh, one of the shiuch, he described uh, the mercy of the Prophet as just like this, an all-embracing mercy, like in a hugging, a, a mercy that embraces, like as he's embracing the whole, all the universes. And even those you know, as he mentioned, even the disbelievers, even those disbelievers who 
revile him and rebuke him. He's a mercy to them, and they don't even know it. They don't even know it, subhanAllah. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to stop here, inshallah. Um, or should I just read another paragraph? I'll just read one more paragraph. He says, here, <laughs> This is so beautiful, subhanAllah. As for his mercy to the believers, it lay in his guiding them to happiness in this world and the next. And by the effort he extended on their behalf to uh, improve the affairs of both relig of their religious and worldly lives. And this is always uh, something that, you know, um, uh, this is we see that in the sirah and you know uh so much and if somebody that is one of the things that the goal of my sirah class is to to show how much he loved us sallam and i will say you know alhamdulillah there was when my um we were doing this thing to ask my son uh, ask our kids to write something about what's allah sallam and my son was 7 at that time and he wrote that you know he did so much for us and I was really grateful that that him, you know, me, you know, teaching the sirah to my kids that that is the message they got, and that is the message that they have in the sirah. It's not about the message. It's not about oh, he fought the kafar and he won and he did this and this. The message is the love that he had and the care and the sacrifice and the utter, you know, preference of us, of his ummah to everyone, to even himself, above himself and his family that he gave. We see that in the CR, how much he sacrificed. And so that is the message. If you're not getting that message from the Sira, you're you're listening to the wrong wrong Sira. So um that is the point. Inshallah, you know, uh, of of learning the Sira to recognize his favor Indeed, the favor of Allah was great upon the believers. When he sent to them a messenger from amongst themselves to that he recites them his ayat. You know, um, so subhanAllah, that is the the uh the goal of the Sira to recognize that. So he says, and uh it, it, as for his mercy to the believers, it lay, it lay in his guiding them to happiness in this world and the next. And by the effort he extended on their behalf to improve the, their affairs of both their wor religious and worldly lives and to warn them against that which would correct them, corrupt them out of compassion and mercy for them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and for the believers, he is compassionate and merciful. Who is referring to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Right, and in that famous ayah of, uh, in Surah Tawbah, and for, with the believers, he's compassionate and merciful. And compassion, ra'fa, entails that he ward off all evil, corruption, and harm. So when you have compassion for someone, you want to, you know, keep them away from all uh, heart hurt and harm, right? And mercy entails that he brings all manner of goodness, virtue, and well-being. I'm inshallah. I'm going to read this part again. Uh, I'm not uh, inshallah. This is just so beautiful. We'll let people know that it's the chapter on his mercy. It's a beautiful chapter, and we say. Here we say, Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nahu ahdu. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nahu ahdu. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nahu ahdu. Subhana wa kutra rabbil azadi amna yusikun. Wa salamu alayhi wa sallam alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Last uh, Friday of Ramadan, please uh, remember me and your du'as. Allahumma ta salamu alayhi wa sallam. Barakta rabbina wa ta'ali jaya. Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam.
I actually just want to mention to everybody's here, subhanAllah, this is the 27th night tonight. Um, actually, I wanted to make a post on it for everybody. I'll just let you guys know who's here. But um, 27th night traditionally in Damascus would be the night they would bring out the hair of the Prophet wasallam in the masjid of Umu, Umu, masjid, the, the, the masjid of Bani Umayyah, right? The masjid of the Umayyad, Umayyad masjid. Um, uh, they would uh, bring out the hair of the Prophet wasallam there on the 27th night. And also um, other places I, I saw, you know, I was blessed to see it when I was studying there on the 27th night on more than one occasion. Um, but, but the point being, subhanAllah, I know my some my shiuch do that as well. And the point being, subhanAllah, that this night is the, the best night. And many of the ulama say it's the Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night. And they chose the best night of the year to see the hair or take, you know, have people get blessing from the hair, uh, seeing the hair of the Lord. But it's not just about seeing his hair. It's about, um, you know, moving our hearts for him. Sometimes these ziyarat, they would take time. They would take time. There would be a lot of people. The shiuch with the, who were in care or who were serving, or khadim of the Athar Sharif, who were serving the Athar Sharif, they would um, they would be there. The other shaykh, you know, they would be there for a long time. Meaning what? They weren't in their homes praying. They were doing in this majlis. But what was it? It was a majlis where their hearts were fired up with the love of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I remember one majlis, I wasn't there, but one of my, you know, actually the um, Sheikh's wife told me that um, they they had a, a ziyara, call it a ziyara, where we, it's like a visiting of the, of the blessed hair, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But she said the whole night, that's what they did. She's like, there was no praying, no, nothing. And this is one of my shiuch that I consider one of my, one of uh, the most, the sheikh that is most afqa, he has the most fiqh of all of my shaykh. He has the most fiqh, and most understanding of the deen. I consider one of the one of my uh, most, uh, you know. And he, he, she said, in this night, they did that they didn't do anything else except praising the Prophet Allah and um, you know doing the ziyara. And in that really is something we really have to reassess, remember what is the import, what's important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly in the Quran, he doesn't look at your, your outward, he looks at your hearts. Have a heart, have, spend, yes, of course, pray, do that, you know, you read Quran, spend some moments, if it's with nasheed, if nasheeds are going to, rekindle your heart listen to nasheed this is the night you want to rekindle your heart you want to have your heart so yearning for our prophet i'm so yearning for allah that when he looks at your heart there's nothing but allah and the messenger in your heart so why do you descend it that's the kind of heart you want you want a heart that is that you want to show allah this night your actions, never will your actions be good enough because everything is from the mercy of God, right? But you see as someone who's coming to you, if somebody comes to you with like a plate of food, but this person, you know, say they have a very nice plate of food, but this person is somebody who, you know, you know, you know, is just an acquaintance rather than someone who comes to you that loves you but even if he's given you something little but you know that he's this person is like is it your child or someone who loves you your best friend who are you going to be more happy with what are you going to be more happy with a visit from someone else oh yeah it's really it's really sweet oh you brought all this stuff great you know thank you so much very kind of you but you know the the one that you'll be rejoice with is someone who you love so much and somebody who, even if they had little, 
but you still think it's, oh, how little and cute. And, you know, you love that. You treasure that more. So remember to keep intact, inshallah, your hearts and keep focused. And, you know, um, find out if you're not people who listen to nasheeds, if you're not people who listen to, in, you know, for me, sometimes the Arabic nasheeds don't do as much, uh, don't kindle my heart as much as the the not the Urdu nasheeds that I live. When I listen to Urdu nasheeds, I, I, my heart is just like on fire for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> but um find out what what kindles your heart what is it it may be listening to a lecture but what you want or listening to talk about the prophet sallallahu alaihi you know about his kindness about his you know listening to talk about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what you know what is it that really you know um opens up your heart that's what you want to do tonight that's what you want to do you know do your ibadah do your thing and make sure your hearts are opened up Inshallah, and that's what I leave you with. And we say, make dua for the people of Palestine. Inshallah, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to